today, Great Charles. I'm glad to be speaking to you again. I hope you're all well. Up to now, the work has been pretty standard, but now we are going to move a gear up. So I want you to listen to the video first without writing, and then afterwards go through the video again and uh, write down what you need to write. Uh, if you still don't understand, just do it again. Um, and then you can always, what we have to do then afterwards is if you still have a problem with it, we can look at it quickly in class again. So let's start with today's lesson. So we are on 27 January. And the heading for the day is geometric sequence number three. First, before we go to the geometric sequences, I want us to look at a few algebra notes. Now, I want you to listen carefully. This is quite fun. And this is about fractions. If we look at these fractions here, consider three over four, equals six over eight. Now that is true name, but because they are equivalent fractions. Now let's swap the four and the six. Now it looks like this. So instead of the six being there, a numerator for the eight, it's now a denominator for the three. Now is this equation still true? This is a half, and this is a half. Equation is still true. So even if we swap the four and the six, equation oh, is still true. Now, swap the three and the eight. This one, and well, I'm going to use this one here. So swap the three and the eight. What happens? So yeah. The three and the eight, I swapped it. Now, is this equation still true? Eight over six, it's true, equals four over three. Okay, let's look further. Let's swap the numerators with the denominators. Okay, this is basically um, sort of, you can see that it's going to be like that. So we swap the six and the eight. 6 over 8 equals 3 over 4. So we can swap it like that, as long as we do it on both sides. All right, so now this one here. If we consider this equation here, 3 over 4 equals 6 over 8. Um, I can say 3 times 8 equals 4 times 6. You must just be very careful. You can only do it when there's an equal sign. Not when there's a plus or a multiplication or any other operator. There must be an equal sign. Then 3 times 8 equals 4 times 6. So we may use these equations that we did these uh, when we are solving algebra problems. So we had it yesterday when we said, when we used this working example here, when we said the R is 2x minus 6 over x minus 6 equals to 5x plus 3, 2x minus 6. So when we simplified it, we said 2x minus 6 times 2x minus 6 equals x minus 6, 5x plus 3. So that is where we use it. So in general, I'm just um, showing you this. We are going to use it more fully when we do our Euclidean in a week or so. So we are going to say if A over B equals C over D, then 
I can swap the B and the C, the A over C equals B over D. Yeah, I've got the same equation, A over B, C over D. I can swap the A and the D, and D over B equals C over A. I can swap the numerators with the denominators, B over A, D over C, and I can write A times D equals B times C. Okay, now I'm just saying again, note, note, note. You can only do this when it's fraction equals fraction, not for fraction plus fraction or fraction uh, times fraction. So it can be only used there. Okay, so I just wanted you to know that that is where this simplification comes from in example two. Page seven. And let's go on with today's work then. This example, really important. What they give us here is, let me just get it for you so that you see what it looks like. So this is it's the work example here. Page eight. It's at the bottom of, uh, of the page here. So the first, the second term is minus four. The fifth term is 32. All right, so the first question is, uh, determine a formula for the nth term of the sequence, that is Tn. So they want to know Tn. So firstly, we do what we did with the original sequence portion. So we write it down in terms of our building blocks. So they say T2 is minus 4, T5 is 32. That's what they gave us. And they gave us, it's a geometric sequence. So now we have the formulas, the general formulas for uh, geometric sequences. T2 equals AR, we know that. So AR equals minus 4. And T5 is equal to AR to the power of 4 equals 32. Now, note the method here. So this is the method we use to simplify when we work with geometric sequences. We divide, we divide the two terms and the term where the exponent is bigger that one is the numerator. So in this case, I'm going to have AR to the power of 4 divided by AR, and that will be 32 over minus 4. So I'm left here then with 4 minus 1. R to the power of 3 equals negative 8. That means R is minus 2. So now we substitute it into AR equals minus, bar, minus 4, and then the A is going to be 2. So my general term will then be AR to the power of N minus 1. So that is TN 2 times, and the R always in brackets, minus 2 to the power of N minus 1. Let's have a look at the second question, which term has a value of minus 1024? Okay, now this question is going to give us a little bit of um, surprise. So let's have a look. So this is what I have. This is the value of my term. And then that is the general term. So we know that the first thing we're going to do, we isolate the N on the one side. Okay, so to do that, we are going to divide by this two, and we are going to uh, separate these exponents, minus two to the power of N 
minus two to the power of minus one. So I'm just leaving this, I'm not working anything out. Minus two and minus two to the power of minus one. The negative stays and uh, the negative one, two to the power of negative one means the two is uh, in the denominator. So now I'm still isolating the n. So I'm going to times with the reciprocal of that, which is minus two over one. So now uh, I can work it out. So it's going to be 1024 equals negative 2 to the power of n. Right, now we want to use our logs. So yesterday I said I will show you the logs on a calculator. So I just want to very quickly go back to the sum when we use the logs. So here it is at the bottom here. So we wanted to use the logs to work out the value of the n. So this is what we have been getting. We have been getting 1 over 4096 equals a half to the power of n. Just highlight this quickly. So this is what we've been getting, and we want to write n equals two. So when you go to your calculator, you'll see there is a lock there, and if we press it, that is what we get. But that is not what we want. We want to show the base. This lock here is lock, and the base is t. So that is not what we want to do. Um, I'm going to use that one there, just the one at the bottom of the on. So it's that one there. So now my base here is a half, so I can write one divided by two or zero comma five, or you can write fraction, no problem. And then my answer here is, I can write a fraction, one, one, oh, four, six, or you can write one divide by one, oh, nine, six. So, four, oh, nine, six. And my answer is 12, and that is the answer we've been given. So let's do the same now with our sum that we have. So I'm going to say n equals, so now I go there, it's going to be log, and my base is negative 2, and the y here is 1024. And you can see we get a math error. Now why? Why do we get a math error? Because the base, if you remember when we defined the logs, we said that the A, the base, has to be bigger than zero. That is the only, the reason why we say that is because then it's the only time when it works. Now, we can still solve this using logs if we think Carefully. Now I want you to listen to what I'm saying. Just take a deep breath and listen. I know that if my answer is plus 1024 and I'm having minus 2 to the power of something, I know that my n is going to be an even number, right? And if I have plus 1024 equals 2 to the power of n. My n can be any number. 
but the ends, these two ends are the same, do you agree? But for an even, for n an even number, the ends are the same. So if I have here a question that says 1024 equals negative 2 to the power of n, I automatically know that the n is going to be an even number. So let's have a look just, just to quickly revise this. If I've got minus 2 to the power of 4, the answer is going to be positive. So it's exactly the same as 2 to the power of 4. You can test it. If I've got minus 2 to the power of 6 in either number, it's the same as saying 2 to the power of 6. Or if I have minus 2 to the power of 3, which is an uneven number, my answer will be negative. And if I've got minus 2 to the power of 7, my answer will be negative and not positive. So that means I can actually use a log to work out the answer. So I can say 1024 plus 1024 equals plus 2 to the power of n, and then I will get my n is 10. Now, if this whole system seems too difficult for you to remember, okay, you can do, you can use your calculator by testing. So you can say minus 2 to the power of 3 is minus 8 minus 2 to the power of 8, because you know, we know we have to reach 1024. So now we go a bit bigger. That is 256. That is minus 512. That now gives me 1024. So that means this, the n is going to be 10. So you can also do it like that by experimenting. Uh, to get the right number. Um, of course, we would want you to use the logs. You have to use the logs when we do exponential functions. So it will be better then for you to use the logs now and get used to. Okay. So let's have a look at uh, number three. Number three is the, the old question that says, determine the eighth term of t. So we have the general equation, a r to the power of seven for term eight. So it's going to be the substitute two times minus two to the power of seven. It is minus 256. Let's have a look at work example two on page nine. Just want to cover the light a little bit. Okay, here we have it. Okay, now this example is also very important, a typical exam question. So what they say is this, they say the first three terms of a sequence 2xy9 form an ar arithmetic progression or an arithmetic sequence. So the first three forms an arithmetic sequence and the last three forms a geometric sequence. Determine x and y. In, so here they say a rhythmic progression. We normally use a, s, and g, x in each case. So let's have a look at how would we work that out. Okay. So I'm going to have this. Okay, so our 
first three terms forms a arithmetic sequence. Now, from the properties of an arithmetic sequence, I can say that x minus 2 equals y minus x. And I can get my first equation. y equals 2x minus 2. Then the three last uh, uh, terms forms a geometric sequence from the fact that it's geometric, the property is y over x equals 9 over y. Okay, and now we know that this times this is that times that y squared equals 9x. And that will be my second equation. Okay, what I'm going to do now. Okay, let me just adjust it a bit so that it focuses. There we go. So now I'm going, I want to say that this equation squared equals this equation, which is squared. So I'm going to square number one. There it's squared. And I'm going to say um, this one here, y squared equals y squared. And we know that when we want to solve a square, we are going to say zero equals. So this is what we get. Then we factorize and we can say x is a quarter or x is equal to four. And you must make sure that you understand that they are two sets of answers. So x can be a quarter or x can be four. So what happens now is we have x, we have an x and we have a y. So we say for x equals one over four, we had um, equation one was y equals 2x minus 2. We substitute and we get y equals 302. For x equals 4, substitute it in number 1 and we get y equals 6. So for x, for these two, my arithmetic sequence is 2, a quarter, minus the over 2. For x equals 4, my arithmetic sequence is a quarter minus 3 over 2, 9. Now, for this one here, for the x equals 4, y equals 6. This is going to be my arithmetic sequence, 2, 4, 6, and my geometric sequence, 2, 6, 9. Always when you work with geometric sequences, remember that there may be more than two answers because we are, um, we are writing fractions, one fraction divide, uh, something divide by another one, term two divide by term one. And then a lot of the times we end up with x squared. Okay, so your homework is going to be exercise four on page nine. Uh, it is this one here, and I want you to really make sure that you understand these questions when you work them out. They are exam type questions, so make sure that you get this exercise, you get the right answers. Remember to mark your answers. Okay, so I'll be talking to you again tomorrow. Uh, enjoy the mathematics. Um, it's going to be fun from now on. So let me just try to close the message, the, the meeting.